This show is brought to you by NMDC Group. Malaysia's Prime Minister proposes an FTA between the ASEAN and GCC blocs, and the GCC economy could hit $13 trillion by 2050. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Farah. Malaysia is proposing the creation of a free trade agreement between the ASEAN bloc and the GCC. At a summit between the two blocs, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim said it would be the first of its kind between ASEAN and Gulf states. He said the agreement is crucial to sustainable growth. The 10-member bloc of 600 million people has combined economies worth $2.3 trillion. For years, it sought to integrate its economies through trade, investment and harmonized standards and customs procedures. Investing in green and sustainable projects could grow GCC GDP to $13 trillion from $2 trillion currently, according to a Century International Holding report. The figure is double the GCC's currently projected $6 trillion regional GDP by 2050. The report says $13 trillion can be reached if the GCC embraces a green growth strategy with a focus on producing green and blue hydrogen. It can also attract $300 billion in FDI by becoming the hub for global value chains. Oman's annual inflation rose to 1.3% in September from 0.8% in August, driven by a rise in food prices. Official data shows the rise in Oman's CPI last month was mainly due to a year-on-year -year increase in food and beverage prices by 3.4% from 2.9% in August. Likewise, prices of housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuel types grew by 1.3% in September, compared to 0.03% in August. The prices of various goods and services rose by 2.7 percent, whereas transport prices fell by 1.4 percent annually last month. The cement business of Indian billionaire Gautam Adani's conglomerate has secured a new $3.5 billion loan. It will use the funds to refinance debt it took to buy ACC and Ambuja cements last year. Ten banks, including First Abu Dhabi Bank, issued the loan with a three-year term. It will save Adani Cement $300 million. Adani Group entered the cement sector last year with a $10.5 billion acquisition of Ambuja and ACC from Swiss giant Halsam. L'Oreal sales in North Asia dropped 4.8% in Q3, largely missing expectations for a 14.4% rise. Analysts pointed to a sharper-than-expected hit to business after the Chinese government imposed tighter controls on resellers who buy products at lower prices abroad and resell them at a discount in China. Although weakness in North Asia because of travel retail issues and the luxury division was expected by investors, analysts say the scale of the miss took them by surprise. More debt defaults are likely to emerge in China's property sector as troubled developers struggle with a weak home sales outlook while fundraising remains challenging. Analysts say a massive $124.5 billion of bonds are now in default in the entire $175 billion China property dollar bond sector. $60.5 billion worth of Chinese property bonds are due in the next six months. Major developer Country Gardens international bondholders are now seeking urgent talks with the company. And Elon Musk says X will soon launch two new tiers of premium subscriptions. One is lower cost with all features but no reduction in ads, and the other is more expensive but has no ads. Musk has been trying to boost revenue by charging users and by winning back advertisers. Many stopped buying ads after Musk fired most employees and disbanded content moderation teams. Musk has acknowledged that the platform has taken a hit on revenue and has blamed activists for pressuring advertisers. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. This show is brought to you by NMDC Group.